Hi, I'm Jesus Gonzalez Matos from the Northampton High Students of Color Alliance. Welcome to the transcript. This week, the transcript updates you on new tech releases, sits down with the Northampton High football team, and Eli and Christian explore recent NFL protests. As of Tuesday, at least 15 people were confirmed dead in wildfires in California. On Monday, Governor Jerry Brown issued emergency proclamations for three counties north of San Francisco, where fires have resulted in the destruction of at least 2,000 structures. The blazes began Sunday, with now approximately 73,000 acres on fire, and have limited to no containment thus far. Hundreds of missing persons reports have been filed, and an estimated 94,000 people are currently without power. This week, EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt signed a measure to withdraw from the Clean Power Plan, which sets national limits on carbon pollution from power plants. The Trump administration reportedly sees the Obama-era regulations as an economic issue that affects job development, particularly in the coal industry. The regulations were instituted under the Obama administration as a way to reduce pollution and improve air quality. Without the Clean Power Plan, it is unlikely that the U.S. will meet the standards outlined in the Paris Climate Agreement. Gregory McMaster of Northampton pled not guilty to charges of burning personal property, burning a building, and assault and battery on a police officer this Tuesday in Northampton District Court. McMaster was found highly intoxicated near the locations of two fires set early Monday on the properties of the King Street CVS and a synagogue on Prospect Street. McMaster was convicted of burning personal property in June of 2016, and Northampton police also suspected him of setting three fires in August of 2016. Hi, I'm Jonah Ellis Murphy, and welcome to TechBits. Last week on Wednesday, Google released a plethora of new products. Let's take a look at some of the highlights. Alongside several software updates, Google released a small speaker called the Google Home Mini. This speaker has the Google Voice Assistant built in. At only $50, the Mini is a competitor to Amazon's own Voice Assistant, which has been holding a market share. Now to the main event. Two phones, the Google Pixel 2 and the Google Pixel 2 XL. These phones follow about the same lines as last year's models with standard top-line components. However, Google has made some improvements since last year. Both phones now have two front-firing speakers, a feature we have not seen on smartphones in years. These are as opposed to the traditional bottom-firing speakers as seen on iPhones or Samsung. In addition, the pixels are now just as waterproof as the iPhone 7 or 8, meaning it's good for a shower or cleaning off dirt. Added to the camera this year is a new mode called Portrait Mode. This allows the background of a photo to be blurred, but keep the subject in focus. While it normally takes two cameras to achieve this mode, Google has done it with one. Finally. All the Pixel 2 phones have a feature called Active Edge. This allows you to squeeze the sides of the phone to summon the Google Assistant. If you're interested in getting your hands on a Google Pixel 2, you may be out of luck. Last year, Google only sold 2.4 million devices on Verizon. And while that may seem large, it's not in comparison to Samsung or other phone releases. The Google Pixel 2s were almost out of stock only three hours after Google announced them. So, good luck. Hi, I'm Gabe Nicotera. Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? Football. The only reason I'll have plans on a Friday night is already more than halfway through their season. This year, the Northampton High football team went through some big changes, acquiring a new head coach, Eddie Jewell. This week, I stood up with him to discuss his role as head coach this year. Do you feel that your age has an impact on how the players respond to you? Um, not necessarily. I don't think so. Um, I think that my age, you know, helps me, you know, relate to some of the players. I've been in their shoes quite recently. Um, but, you know, I think that my preparation and my love for the game and you know, my IQ has shown the guys and the players on the team that, you know, how hard I work for them. And uh, I think they're buying into it. 
Uh, so during part of your high school career, you played against Northampton's rival Amherst, as well as playing with Wilbraham and Munson. So has playing with and against teams in the Pioneer Valley affected your coaching decisions this year? Uh, not at all. You know, I, I consider myself a Wilbraham Munson alumni, a Titan. You know, going to Amherst was you know a, a great experience, but it has not affected the way I've, uh, I've uh, you know I've been coaching the season. So I've been taking my past experiences. You know, the past few years where I've coached out in the uh, uh, Eastern Mass College and see. Uh, how high school out there has been played and been coached. So I've been taking some of those methods and tools and trying to bring it back out here. So last year's team had 18 seniors that graduated, and this year's squad is fairly young. Uh, where do you see the varsity football program going in the future? You know, we've got a great sophomore class and freshman class, um, and a nice junior class. Um, so the future is bright for us, you know. Um, so, you know, it starts with the youth, you know, and it starts with the seniors that we have now. It's a good foundation uh, for the future. So I believe that we have a strong future in front of us, you know, in a couple years. You know, I think we might be contending for a state, for a state title. All right, thanks for being on Hamped Up. I also sat down with Amelette Ortiz, the only female football player on the team, concerning what it's like to be in her cleats. Since I'm the only girl, it's kind of hard to talk to the guys. And again, since it's my first year, I'm still learning the basics, and it's been pretty challenging. So I'm trying to get fit to pass my fitness test for the military. And my little brother wants to join the football team. So I took on the task of learning for him to teach him after. I'm going to keep playing football and coach my little brother. Just keep going with it because I really like it. Aside from football, both boys and girls cross country teams as well as the girls soccer team are all in first place in the respective divisions. Golf is still one game below a 500 average. The field hockey team has a home game this Saturday at 12 p.m. and the football team has a home game tonight at 7 o'clock. Thanks for watching Hamped Up, I'm Gabe Nicotera. Hey Welcome to the other stuff. This week we tackle the controversy of professional athletes protesting the national anthem. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even say anything! Come on! Recently in the sports world, a movement has been growing of sitting or kneeling during the national anthem. This was sparked by quarterback Colin Kaepernick. Copernicus! No. In 2016, kneel during the national anthem to protest racial injustice and police brutality in America. Guess you could say he took a knee to take a stand. That's bad. No, nah, that's right. bad. Just read it. Uh, it's all there. Okay. Just read it. The trend gained traction after lots of media coverage, and soon players all over the league were protesting in their own way. Eventually, the protest came to other sports and became so significant that President Trump decided to comment on it. Wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners, when somebody disrespects our flag? to say, get that son of a bitch off the field right now, out, he's fired. He's fired! During week three of the NFL season, over 180 players sat or kneeled and three teams stayed in the locker room to protest. In addition, many NFL owners, including those who have publicly supported Trump, condemned his comments and supported their players' freedom of expression. After several trips to the doctor's office, Christian and I came to the conclusion that we're both super white and don't have as much insight to the racial aspect of this controversy. And there is a racial aspect to this controversy. The arguments between those who support the protest and those who are against it are both very layered. Those who are for it may argue that it's an example of free expression and protest, as well as a reasonable response to a serious issue. Those against may argue that the national anthem is sacred and isn't the right platform to protest. There are also arguments that this protest isn't appropriate since the athletes are so well off and that by not standing during the anthem, you're showing disrespect to the American military and our veterans. After considering both sides of the argument, we asked around the school to get some more insight on the issue. Uh, for a sporting event, I'd say, you know, just standing up, either, you know, you can have your hands wherever you want, definitely a hat off if you are wearing a hat. And if, you know, if you choose to sit, then you can. It's your choice, but I feel like, you know, if I were at a, any sporting event, definitely standing up, hand over heart. It's each individual's choice, and I think that's the foundation that America was built upon, so it's why not carry it over till today. I haven't seen anything to suggest in any way, shape, or form that's anti-military, both, in the, both in, the, in the words of the people who 
originated the protest or actively participated in the protest, I have not to this moment seen one, uh, have, I've not had one shred of, of evidence or even inkling that it is. It may be our sensitivity that says that the anthem is about America and, and soldiers died for this. And, and uh, you know, that sensitivity isn't irrelevant, but uh, I haven't heard anybody say that that's a part of it. This conflict isn't going away anytime soon, but we decided to try and help anyway. We came up with new special etiquette on how to stand during the national anthem. Put your right hand over your heart, and to show respect to the military, salute with your left hand. However, in order to also show respect to the protesters, tape a picture of Rosa Parks to your torso. Thank if you have a hat, don't fully take it off your head. Rather, continue to hold it in your mouth. Nice. If you have a coat, tie it into a cape around your neck in order to respect Superman, our greatest American hero. And finally, rather than fully standing, kneeling, or sitting, assume a half stand, half kneel as to not offend anyone. It looks like we found the perfect middle ground that everyone will love. <sighs> Thanks for watching. On Friday, Soka will be making Hispanic food for Hispanic Heritage Month, which will be hosted in the cafeteria. Don't forget to head over to nhstechnology.org to watch this week's online extra where Eli and Christian eat tacos with Miss Kielbasa. And don't worry, tell it like it is and hit it or miss it. We'll be back next week. Mm -hmm.